two U.S. presidents serving at the same time. Is that even possible? Well, it happened during one of the most controversial elections in U.S. history. In fact, it took them four months to even figure out who the actual winner was. And that was only after a secret backroom deal was struck up between the Democrats and the Republicans. Announced who the winner was just three days before the actual inauguration. Three days before the inauguration. Then there's a secret swearing-in ceremony that was done at the White House. And you end up having two presidents serving at the same time. <laughs> two presidents serving at the same time. I know it sounds bizarre. We'll sort through all the details and more in this edition of Press Politics. It's 1876 and the United States is celebrating its big centennial. In 1876, we also have a presidential election year and the two biggest issues are Republican scandals that had been taking place under President Grant and also the issue of Reconstruction. There were still federal troops in the, in the Deep South that Southerners wanted gone. The Republicans ran Rutherford B. Hayes, who had been governor of Ohio, Civil War veteran, and the Democrats selected Samuel Tilden, governor of New York, who also had a big reputation for fighting corruption and scandal. Well, election night, Tilton goes to bed believing he's president of the United States and Hayes goes to bed thinking he's lost. Uh, Tilton has 184 electoral votes and Hayes has only 165. Tilton is one vote short of becoming president of the United States, one electoral vote short. 185 was the magic number. And there's still these 20 electoral votes that are being disputed from four different states. There was accusations of bribery, uh, accusations of voter intimidation, voter suppression, double voting. And so which electors do you recognize? Do you recognize Tilden's electors? Do you, or do you recognize Hayes' uh, electors? And so it became so debated and so heated that the Congress set up an electoral commission to settle the issue and decide who those 20 electoral votes were going towards. Uh, there were five members of the House selected on this 15 panel uh, commission five senators and five members of the United States Supreme Court. And this debate drug on for months. A backroom deal was finally worked up between the Democrats and the Republicans. It's called the Compromise of 1877. Now there's a list of things that both sides wanted. But the main thing that the Democrats wanted was they wanted federal troops removed from the South. And they agreed to not contest the election if Hayes promised to remove those federal troops from the South. And so just three days before the presidential inauguration, it was officially announced that Rutherford B. Hayes would be the next president of the United States, the 19th president of the United States. They gave all 20 electoral votes to Rutherford B. Hayes. And Tilden only needed one electoral vote. Tilden loses this election by one electoral vote. In fact, he won 250,000 more votes in the popular vote than Hayes. And this is the closest that the Democrats had come in, in nearly 20 years since going back to James Buchanan of taking back the White House. So you can imagine how Democrats felt like this election was stolen, that it was corrupt. They called Rutherford B. Hayes his fraudulency. You can imagine that voters were upset and supporters were upset and there was real concern that Tilden's supporters would somehow on Inauguration Day, find a way to have him sworn in, go through the whole oath of office, and declare himself the real president. Uh, there was also these Tilden Hendricks Minuteman clubs that had been formed in about 11 different states. They armed themselves, and they shouted, on to Washington, and they shouted, Tilden or blood. So there was real concern of Tilden supporters showing up at the inaugural and protesting insurrection and perhaps some violence. In fact, during these four months that the Electoral Commission was trying to figure out who the winner was, uh, Hayes received an anonymous letter telling him to remember what happened to Lincoln. And in fact, one time while he was sitting down for dinner with his family there in Fremont, Ohio, uh, someone fired a shot at the house. It went through a window and lodged in a back wall uh, of the library there. So you can imagine the real concern for their own personal safety 
and the concern of, of what possibly Inauguration Day would look like. In 1877, March the 4th, the customary day for the inauguration fell on a Sunday. And so there was already, it was already off the table. They wouldn't have the inauguration on the Sabbath. And in fact, twice before in U.S. history with James Monroe and Zachary Taylor, they had moved the inauguration from March the 4th to March the 5th um, just because uh, of it falling on a Sunday. One day before the customary inauguration date, on Saturday, March the 3rd, President Grant invited President-elect Hayes and his family, his wife, to the White House for a dinner. And following the dinner, Hayes was accompanied by Grant to the Red Room of the White House. And there in the Red Room of the White House was the Chief Justice of the United States. He had been brought in secretly into the White House. And Grant persuaded Hayes to take the oath of office. Uh, he believed in the continuity of government and didn't want there to be a gap, uh, a void there in the executive branch from the time that he left office on March the 4th to the time that Hayes took office on March the 5th. Hayes, there in the Red Room of the White House, took the 35-word oath of office early. And in fact, Hayes is the only president to ever be sworn in prior to his actual official inauguration. So, technically, for a period of time, we have Grant and Hayes both serving as presidents of the United States at the same time. But on Inauguration Day, uh, on Mar Monday, March the 5th of 1877, observers noticed as the president's, President Grant's carriage uh, went by that Rutherford B. Hayes was sitting on the right side of the carriage, which was usually the side reserved for the President of the United States. And for some, that was caught as an, odd, an oddity to them. And little did they know that he actually had already been sworn in as President. Most people had no clue to that. But that day went off without a hitch. There was no violence, no insurrection, no problem with from Tilden supporters and we had a very peaceful transfer of power that day. We've always had it and hopefully we'll always have it in the future. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you share our videos with your friends and family and help us get word out about Prez Politics. If you haven't already joined our Prez Politics fam, make sure you hit our subscribe channel and hit that notification button.